Hello, my name is Scott Spicer. I'm the Media Outreach and Learning Spaces Librarian here at the University of Minnesota Libraries. In this video abstract, I will discuss my paper in the most recent issue of the Journal of Librarianship and Scholarly Communication entitled Exploring Video Abstracts in Science Journals, an Overview and Case Study. So what is a video abstract? This study focuses on the context of video abstracts in science journals as there are a few examples in the arts, humanities, and social sciences disciplines. For the purposes of this study, video abstract is defined as a video presentation corresponding to a specific science research article which typically communicates the background of a study, methods used, study results, and potential implications through the use of images, audio, video clips, and text. For example, quantum physicists have used the genre to describe and visualize qubits. Gastroenterologists have produced a video abstract to describe factors that determine risk for surgery in pediatric patients with Crohn's disease. Pathologists have produced a video abstract to describe the connection between mitochondrial stress and hearing loss in mice. And mathematicians have produced video abstracts to describe their theorems either on a whiteboard or simply to challenge themselves to describe their research naturally as mathematician Paul Young is doing in this video. Because these digital videos can often be referenced in social networks, the video abstract also offers authors the opportunity to extend the reach of their research to new audiences that may have been unaware of the article, and for journal publishers to be able to promote their publications. This sharing is often accomplished by the journal hosting the video on its own website, on the journal's YouTube channel, or perhaps both. The emergence of the video abstract is occurring in a broader ecosystem of multimodal scholarship which seeks to leverage the digital environment by communicating information through new genres and mediums that would have previously been impossible through print alone. Further, the altmetrics movement provides some new tools and ways of thinking to better capture and define the impact of these non-traditional forms of scholarship. This environment presents great opportunities and some challenges for academic library publishers and other library support services. To better understand this potential, this study seeks to capture a snapshot of this practice. Specifically in this study, I articulated the publication trends by capturing the publication usage and other descriptive data from a sampling of 20 science journal YouTube channels that have posted at least five video abstracts. Further, using a case study of the New Journal of Physics, NJP, and YouTube, I explored two primary research questions addressing the relationship between video abstract and article usage. For the first research question, I ran a Spearman rank correlation coefficient test to correlate the usage or view counts of video abstracts hosted locally on the New Journal of Physics website with the view counts of the corresponding video abstract reposted on the NJP YouTube channel. For the second research question, I ran the Spearman rank test to correlate video abstract view counts on both the NJP website and NJP YouTube channel correlated with the readership usage of the corresponding article. Though still very early, the data captured from the 20 science journals on YouTube suggests that the publication trends have sustained consistent annual growth. For the first case study research question, the Spearman test found a moderate positive correlation between the video view counts of the NJP video abstracts a corresponding video abstract on the NJP YouTube channel. In other words, video abstracts with higher view counts on the NJP website were moderately more likely to also have a greater view count on the NJP YouTube channel. With respect to the second research question, the Spearman rank test found a strong positive correlation between the video view count and corresponding readership of the article on NJP, and a moderate correlation between the view counts of YouTube video abstracts and the corresponding readership of the associated article. Overall, most of the NJP video abstracts were viewed on the NJP website, but still 14% occurred on the YouTube site. Considering the limited audiences for most science scholarly articles, this is still a considerable percentage, particularly given the low barriers to reposting on YouTube. Though only 5% of the total articles published had a video abstract associated, Roughly 18% of the top 25 read articles and about 36% of the top 100 read articles had a video abstract associated. It is unclear why this is the case. Perhaps authors that published on topics with broad appeal were more likely to include a video abstract with their article. 
The finding of a moderate positive correlation between view counts suggests some evidence that viewing usage is proportional across platforms. As a publisher, this could be useful in setting expectations for publishing on YouTube in your own website. As expected, there was a strong correlation between high article readership and view counts of corresponding video abstracts on the publisher website. Though the Spearman rank correlation test alone was unable to confirm that the YouTube video abstract on the New Journal of Physics uh, YouTube channel necessarily drove traffic to the article, there is strong anecdotal evidence to suggest that this is the case. Given the high volume of video abstracts published by NJP, number one in the trend study, the best practice of including a citation and link to the article in the YouTube description, as well as some instances discovered from the Altmetrics bookmark lip tool where video abstracts were reposted in science and physics websites. In conclusion, video abstracts are a natural extension of the use of media and science scholarship. As I've demonstrated, there are many benefits to the video abstract medium and genre. Library publishers should consider leveraging this potential by offering their authors the possibility of submitting a video abstract along with their article, perhaps with guidelines appropriate to the journal and discipline. Further, publishers should consider investing in software, such as Hydra or Digital Commons, that provides for a more media-enhanced user experience. Also, given the low barrier, publishers should consider reposting the video abstracts to a journal YouTube channel in order to extend the reach of their author's research in their own publication. Subject librarians should consider becoming more familiar with the tools and publication venues of multimodal scholarship within the context of their researcher communities. They should also consider learning more about the altmetrics movement frameworks and tools in order to better assist their authors with articulating the scholarly impact of these non-traditional works. Also, increasingly, academic libraries are leading their campuses in providing media production support services, often through their media services units or common services portfolios. Media librarians and related media specialists should consider marketing their services to researchers interested in producing these works. It is important to note that this study was designed to be an early snapshot of the video abstract practice. In order to better understand its potential, more studies would be useful, such as exploring further the role of video and article usage in additional journals and disciplines, studying the various ways in which these videos are used, for example, in teaching and learning as well as research and scholarship contexts, conducting a more in-depth content analysis to explore the variety of video abstract composition, and finally, as multimodal practices become more common, it would be useful for librarians to share their experiences so we can develop more effective services for our scholars. If you wish to explore this study further, feel free to contact me directly or access the cleanup version of the full data set along with instructions hosted in the University of Minnesota Digital Conservancy. The link to this data set is cited in the associated article. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the amazing support I received for this study from my colleagues, Carolyn Robert and Jan Franzen. Thanks to you both.